Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the top 25 vintage baseball cards sold on eBay for July 2024. Up first, a little bit of criteria for this video. I'm looking at 1979 or earlier. No duplicate cards are allowed on this list. If there's an auto or a variant, I am allowing those. So a good example is there's two 1954 Hank Aaron cards. One's a PSA 8 and then one's like a 5 with an autograph. If they both have enough of a sales price to be in this video, they will be featured. And I do allow for both graded and raw cards. Although on the raw card side of things, if I see a fake that sells, I'm not going to put that in the video. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at our list. And a few people have asked also for the numbers. Uh, the numbers are in the top right, so you can count down uh, where you're at on the top 25. And then I do throw some honorable mentions. So first, this is the second year Nolan Ryan card, his first solo. A lot of people love this one. And uh, this 1969, which... I mean, the slab itself is a relic. Uh, it sold for uh, $10,000. Nolan Ryan featured so many times on this list this week. Uh, the funny part is his rookie card is an honorable mention. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, up next, we have a Jackie Robinson. Man, I love the eye appeal on this three. It, lo it looks fantastic. Um, obviously, there's some centering issues left to right. But I think if this was graded a while back, this would be a four. I know each corner is a little bit fuzzy, but I think it looks awesome. Now, here is a card I I was somewhat familiar with, but not fully. So this is a 1952 of Frank House. Uh, there's a good amount of cards in the middle of 1952 that have gray backs. And my first assumption on the gray backs for 52s was they were Canadian. I did a little research for this video. And uh, a lot of the 1952 experts say that they are not Canadian. The 54 tops gray backs are, but the 52s are not. So there's two theories. Right now, the biggest theory is like tops sort of ran out of the cardstock and they issued these in gray back. And these gray back cards were distributed in the Midwest. Uh, someone on a forum mentioned they found a decent amount of these like in the Indiana region. Uh, another theory that's out there which isn't as popular as the midwest theory is they were distributed with it's kleenex or doe skin tissues um but more people lean towards that midwestern theory when tops ran out of some of the cardstock uh, also the front images are a little bit inferior on the gray backs in comparison to your normal cream backs but uh this one sold for eleven thousand three hundred and ninety seven dollars for frank cow soup had a 10-year career, but he is not a household name. Uh, Hannes Wagner, 1915 Cracker Jack. Not much to say about this second-year Cracker Jack card. It's a Wagner. People want to get it. And it's it's not bad looking at 2.5. Um, Claude Osteen, if I mispronounce this, I apologize. It's a pop two in a PSA 10 white back. Uh, he had 3.3 ERA, 16-12 strikeouts, uh, three-time All-Star. This one sold for $12,000. George Stone, 1971 tops. Uh, there's three tens of these out there. He had a nine-year career, 60 wins, 590 strikeouts. Uh, this sold for $12,700. Uh, that was card number 20. We're now 1958 Mickey Mandel. This is an old cert. Uh, don't let the lighthouse fool you, but it starts with a zero. And this one sold for uh, $13,000. 1948 Bowman Stan Musial. Um, Probably unpopular opinion here, but I do not like the 48 Bowmans. I think they're one of the ugliest cards out there. Uh, I put rookie cards in quotes because Musial has a lot of cards earlier uh, from 46 and 47. But the hobby loves calling the 48 Bowman or 49 Leaf a rookie. Uh, this one sold for $13,000. Up next, 1970 Nolan Ryan. This is a high number. Uh, his third card, second solo, and uh, in a nine. This one sold for $13,500. Hundred dollars. 1953 Mickey Mantle, his second tops card. This isn't too bad. Um, sometimes these like silver label PSA ones tend to be a little bit overgraded from what I've seen at shows. But uh, really, for 53s, I always look in the bottom left, and it looks like most of the red is still there. Although the scan is a bit shoddy. Uh, this one sold for fourteen five. Up next, 1949 Leaf Babe Ruth. This one has a seven. Uh, this was issued after his death. It's, it's it's a really, really popular card in the hobby, although I think it's quite overrated. But uh, this one sold for $15,000. All right. I think it's Roman Magia. I might have mispronounced this. Uh, this is a pop at seven in a PSA 9. 
Uh, he had a career in the MLB and then also played in Japan. This one sold for $15,000. In 1965, at Clemente Autograph over here. Um, the card actually looks pretty nice. And I think the autograph grade is decent also for a 7. I mean, it looks good as well. I know there's a few points that look like it fell over the card, but pretty clean auto. And uh, this one sold for $16,000. 1915 at Cracker Jack at Ty Cobb. I think this is pretty good eye appeal, even though it was an authentic altered and it sold for 17 grand. 1938, Gaudi Joe DiMaggio. This card was signed on the back. And uh, that's the only number 274 that were graded. Although there was four uh, 250s that were graded that with an autograph. And the way that you tell the card numbers is based off of the cartoons in the back. 250 doesn't have any cartoons. Um, but yeah, this one sold slightly under $20,000. At 1909, E102 Ty Cobb. Uh, this is one of those anonymous set issues. Um, the hobby assumes it's a 1909. It could be earlier or it could be a little bit later. It also sold for about $20,000. 1933, Gaudi Babe Ruth. Uh, one of his most popular cards, and I'd say this is his most popular one out of all the Gaudis. Uh, this three sold for $21,630. 1952, Willie Mays, SGC at seven. Wicked sharp corners, centering, not going to lie, a little bit to be desired. Uh, but I think the card overall looks pretty good, and uh, this one sold for $22,500. 1956, Mantle. He won the Triple Crown this year, and this is his first tops card. Uh, since that Bowman takeover, unfortunately, no mantle in 54 or 55 with tops. Uh, this one's silver 23, 196. In the sixth spot, we have a dual strip card of Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb. Probably part of a larger strip strip sheet, and uh, these two were cut off next to each other. Uh, this one sold slightly under 25,000. Don Drysdale, rookie card. There's 17 PSA 9s, no 10s exist, and this one sold for 26 dollars in the number five spot Jump in number four we have the 1949 leaf jackie robinson in a 5.5 i think this is the most popular jackie robinson card out there and uh, this one sold for 26 to 98 1952 mantle um sold for about thirty five thousand. which sometimes you find ones to twos are in that range my opinion i think this is a really good looking authentic altered and I'd rather have this than some of those trashy ones or 1.5s or 2s. That's all. In the number two spot, we have a BBG Willie Mays in a 7. Now, centering wise, this isn't too bad. It looks like a little bit of a diagonal cut here to the left, unless it's just my eye deceiving me, but it looks like um, there is a decent amount of space up there. Uh, regardless, this one sold for $40,000. And the most expensive card in July. 1914 Joe Jackson. He had very few playing day cards, uh, part of the Black Sox scandal. These 1914s are much tougher to find than 1915s, and this one sold for a solid $51,500. I'm not getting this card anytime soon. Uh, with that in mind, let's take a look at a few honorable mentions. Up first, there's a 1968 complete set, a 68 so known for the Ryan and Ben Trippies. Uh, this one sold for $14,000. Up next, a near complete set from 1955 tops. They are all PSA sixes, but it is missing the Clemente that sold for $27,500. I wonder if that gets you on the registry. Next, 1957 Roberto Clemente Auto. Uh, this sold for $9,500. Uh, autograph isn't as nice as that 65, and the card isn't as nice, right? Pretty terrible centering on this, but it is an earlier Clemente and uh, under 10 grand for this one. Nolan Ryan, rookie, 1968. It's a high grade, but it's a super old slab, and this one sold for $9,200. One of the four rookies from that year. A near 1950 Bowman set. Uh, the person that was mid-grade, I believe he said the Jackie is in a five. I was only missing two cards, number 28 and also 126, and this one sold for $8,800. And for two cards away, just buy those cards and uh, mark it as a complete set and up the price. 1953 Bowman is Dan usual 8.5. I thought this one looked really nice centering wise, and uh, this old price was $7,500. And uh, 1954 Hank Aaron, I was shocked that this one didn't get a dual grade, it just labeled it as authentic. I mean, I even looked at the back, and there's not a lot of chipping. The corners look really, really sharp. I wonder if this was trimmed in some capacity or there's some type of alteration because. 
feel like there's a lot of money being left on the table for this one to sell for $5,000. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm also building up a lot of new uh, set videos. So right now I'm focusing on non-sports, but if you do want to help me out on some alternative or niche sports or even baseball, hit me up Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or email. I always could use some help on some stuff that's not really out there researched. And I do want to thank some of the channel members out there, Paul Giles, Alaska Picker, and Aaron Herbert. You guys can join the channel with the membership as well, and I will put you in all of these videos. All right, I will see you in the next one.